Hi there, and welcome down to the Natural History Museum's paleontology collections. I'm here today with Jack, who's one of our scientists who works here. It's lovely to see you, Jack. Yeah, good to see you. Could you tell me a little bit about all these specimens that you've brought along? Yes, so I've got out today a selection of early dinosaurs and close relatives of early dinosaurs from the museum collection. So, yeah, to talk about what is and what isn't a dinosaur. Brilliant. Um, and I guess probably is with most things. Should we start at the beginning? Yes. So perhaps one of the most exciting specimens we've got here is this. So this is uh, the humerus, so the upper arm bone of an animal known as Nyasasaurus from Tanzania in Africa. Yeah. And what's exciting about this is when initially described, it was thought to be uh, the earliest dinosaur. Oh, wow. So when it was described, it was thought to be from a stage of the Triassic known as the Anician, which is about 240 million years ago. There's now some debate over the age of this, but it's still very much one of the earliest, if not the earliest known dinosaur. Yeah. And do you know kind of beyond just that arm bone, do we know kind of what it might have looked like? Yeah. So the thing with this specimen is it's very fragmentary. So we have this humerus, which luckily preserves this feature here, which is known as the delta pectoral crest. Yeah. And the morphology of this is very, very specific to dinosaurs. So that's how we're able to tell this specimen is a dinosaur, or at least a very, very close relative of dinosaurs. So is that pectoral crest, is that for muscle attachment? Yes, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the characteristics we see um, in, the, uh, in early dinosaurs that sort of allow us to tell them apart from other, their other close relatives is to do with either the hips, the ankles and the legs, so adaptations for walking upright, or in the arms and hands, so for using their arms and hands for gripping, grabbing things. So all early dinosaurs and probably the earliest dinosaur walked upright on two legs and it's only later on that we see dinosaurs starting to walk on four legs again. Yeah, I mean speaking of hips, I was talking quite a yes. large thing here, could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is a model of a hip from a dinosaur, I think it's from Rastospondylus okay. and the reason I've got this model out is because it's nice for showing this gap here. Yeah. So this is where the head of the femur, so the top of the leg would go and this, it's called an open acetabulum, is a very distinctively dinosaur feature. So most close relatives of dinosaur, there'd be a wall of bone closing off the back of this feature. Yeah. Uh, but it's important to remember in life, because dinosaurs, although we often only have the skeletons, obviously they were animals with flesh and blood and muscle, this would have been closed off by a wall of muscles and ligaments yes. in life that would have helped uh, hold the femur in place and helped with walking upright again. And I brought this one out because it's a nice big specimen, it's easy to see. But I've also got down here, this is uh, another example of a hip from an early dinosaur. And this one, this is a real specimen. This right. is from uh, a Welsh early dinosaur known as Pendrake. And you can see nicely if you look through, you can see down to the rock ah, through the hip. Yes, yeah. So you can see, yeah, this distinct open hip morphology. And so, so you're saying that kind of the hips, one of the things that helps sort of define yeah. what a dinosaur is. So are there differences between different dinosaurs and different reptiles? Yeah, so when we look at non-dinosaurian, so dinosaurs are part of a group of reptiles known as the archosaurs, which today the living representatives are crocodiles and birds. Actually, there's quite a nice way to split archosaurs. You either have bird line archosaurs, so stuff that's on the line leading up to birds, or stuff croc line archosaurs, so on the line leading to crocodiles. Yeah. So in earlier bird like archosaurs, for example, like a group known as the Silosaurids, you have the hips have this distinct wall of bone closing them off. Um, and they also, there are other differences in the way this, um, the morphology of this bone known as the ilium. Um, and I mean, so kind of when we talk about pterosaurs, I mean, because they're not on the line to birds, are they? They're slightly different. So pterosaurs is interesting. For a long time, we, we, most people agreed pterosaurs were probably archosaurs. We didn't really know where they sat. And very recently that's changed with the description of fossils like this. Okay. So this is a, <laughs> Not very visually impressive fossil. It's quite hard to pick out what's going on with the naked eye. You can sort of see there's a jaw up here. Yeah. This is from a Scottish animal known as Scleromoclus, which is, again, it's not a dinosaur, but it's on the bird line. So it's fairly close to dinosaurs. And because it's only preserved as natural molds, so in effect gaps in the rock, it's been very difficult to study. So we've known about this for almost all of the 20th century, but we've had to use kind of rubber molds and other techniques to try and cast the bones yeah. in order to study their morphology, which doesn't work very well. You get some bits of the detail and they have to be missing. Casts might look different depending on who made them. But recently, with advances in CT scanning technology, scientists have been able to scan this and build a really nice model of its skeleton. 
and that shows it's part of a group known as the Ligurpatids, and it also helps support a hypothesis that the Ligurpatids are very close to the ancestors of pterosaurs, yeah. and this helps us pin pterosaurs on the family tree of archosaurs. So they are bird-line archosaurs, they're on the line to birds, but they sit just outside dinosaurs okay. in a group known as Pterosauromorpha. And I mean, when we kind of talk about marine reptiles, are they yeah. also on the kind of line to dinosaurs? Do they fit into a different part of the tree? So the groups I've been, we've been talking about now, so dinosaurs, Ligurpetus, like pterosaurs, are what we'd call a kind of a monophyletic group or a clade. So they consist of an animal and all of its ancestors. Marine reptiles are not really a, are not a clade and they're not sort of a technical scientific group. They're more a colloquial name for any reptile that goes back into the sea and okay. is secondarily aquatic. So although we, we think about marine reptiles mainly in terms of the Mesozoic, we have marine reptiles today. It's like sea turtles and sea snakes mm -hmm. are marine reptiles. So marine reptiles are kind of scattered all over the reptile family tree. So mosasaurs, for example, from the Lake Cretaceous are actually deeply nested within lizards. So they're basically they're big lizards that return to the sea. Okay. And I mean, what's this other large fossil that you've brought along over here? Yes. So this is from the same fossil site as Sclaromoclus. This is an animal known as Saltipus. And Saltipus is interesting because no one agrees what it is. Okay. So paleontologists have had lots of ideas over the years and generally it's some, again, somewhere close to the base of dinosaur, dinosauria, either a close relative or perhaps a juvenile of one of the early groups of predatory dinosaurs. But this brings on nicely to an issue of how do we define dinosauria? So I've said, so dinosauria is the group of dinosaurs. Uh, and I've said that we have these characteristics, but modern paleontologists, we tend to think in terms of trees, in terms of phylogenies, big family trees. Yeah. And we have a phylogenetic definition of dinosauria. So the phylogenetic definition of dinosauria would be the least inclusive clade containing Passodomesticus, Triceratops horridus, and Diplodocus carnegie, which is uh, <laughs> a bit a meaningless on its own. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's actually quite simple what you understand what it's saying. So all it's saying is it's the smallest possible group that still includes Diplodocus, like fern outside, Triceratops, and Passodomesticus, which is a house sparrow. So these are representatives of the three big groups of dinosaurs that everyone agrees those three groups are dinosaurs. And what we're saying is if you plot all of, if you have an imagine in your head, a big family tree with every single dinosaur and every bird on it, because birds are dinosaurs, if you pe put, find those three animals and trace back the point where all of those lines meet, that is the base of dinosauria. And everything above that point on the family tree is a dinosaur. Everything not above that point on the family tree is not a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. And what one of the effects of using this sort of definition is if you disagree on the phylogeny, which for a lot of early dinosaurs, their phylogenetic relationships are still highly uncertain, mm -hmm. then different hypotheses will have animals that are either dinosaurs or close relatives of dinosaurs, depending on what tree you've recovered. So we've talked a lot about marine reptiles and pterosaurs, which everyone agrees are definitely not dinosaurs. Mm. Talked about animals like uh, Pendrague, which everyone agrees is a dinosaur. There's this third group, which are animals which may or may not be dinosaurs, depending on what phylogenetic hypothesis you support. Yeah, well, it sounds like it's a very complicated thing that hopefully yes. you're working towards figuring out. I mean, yeah, we could just keep talking about these specimens for a long time, but I think, unfortunately, we've run out of time. But thank you very much for bringing these along and being here today. No worries. Thanks for coming to talk about early dinosaurs. If you need more raw some facts about the natural world, then don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe for more content from the Natural History Museum.